With the last minute change in Texas Tech's bowl game selection, director Dwayne Hill and the Gone Band from Raiderland started making preparations for the 1,000 mile trek from Lubbock to San Diego to perform at halftime of the National University Holiday Bowl. The chances were quite minimal until literally the very last day of Big 12 football play, and then those chances increased quite a bit whenever Oklahoma State lost to OU and then whenever Baylor beat Texas, then we sort of figured that two teams would go to a BCS Bowl, which would kind of bump everyone else up. We had anticipated going to Houston, and so everything was kind of set and planned for that. So um, at the last minute, we had to change all of our plans to San Diego, and it was pretty tough to figure out how to get all the kiddos who we hadn't seen or wouldn't have seen until the trip, um, how to get them all organized and ready to go for a trip to California. Many students, including senior drum major Zach Heflin, were excited and looked forward to going to San Diego for the bowl game. I was really excited. Um, I actually had a wager with Professor Hill that we would end up here at the beginning of the year. Um, but it's exciting because for our senior class, we haven't gotten out of Texas for a bowl game um, and have actually only been to one out-of-state football game at all. So. It was really exciting to get here. Uh, it's kind of the one we always hope to be in just because obviously San Diego is a great city. So. Sending one of the largest marching bands in the nation halfway across the country is no easy task, but with help from the athletics department and president's office, they were able to secure the trip. There's a lot of time and planning going into maybe we could just take half the band or maybe take the whole band and fly or take the whole band and bus. Um, lots of different options, but in the end, President Nellis and the president's office stepped up and gave us a huge donation to get the whole band out here, uh, which was great. After completing the 23-hour drive, the eight buses filled with students and staff arrived at their hotel to check into their rooms. The next morning, everybody had to wake up bright and early for breakfast and to prepare for the first Battle of the Bands pep rally. Yeah, so we did three total, um, and they've been really fun actually. It's a good chance not only to meet some other bands, uh, but we kind of show off some of our fun tunes that we've got and we've got to hear some other bands. So it's nice to always get out and we get used to playing with the Big 12 bands a lot um, and get to know them. It's fun to, to see some other bands and some other traditions from other parts of the country. So those have been good. It's been fun, uh, very spirited. So we've it. With some students spending the holidays outside of the state and country with their family, not all members were able to make the trip to San Diego. This caused some holes in the performances that needed to be filled. Having 50 students not being able to attend the bowl game actually affects us quite a, quite a bit. So we just had to adjust in real time. We took one of our old shows and had to relearn it and kind of reconfigure some things to make it work for halftime. And um, same thing for pregame. Some students have to learn some new spots. but. Our students are so accustomed to changing, making changes and being flexible that um, they understood the importance of just learning it and learning it as quickly as we can. And they did a great job actually considering the, the amount of rehearsal time we had. Um, they did a good job of learning it really quickly and then performing it at a really high level. And forward, march, forward, march. Stand. Included in the Goan Band's list of performances was marching past thousands of attendees during the Big Bay Balloon Parade with other bands from around the world. We got lined up and there are actually a lot of bands there from all over the country, a lot of high school bands, there were military bands, um, and even bands from Australia and all across the world. So got to spend some time with them while we were setting up the block and then uh, once we rolled out, we just marched down. Um, representing Texas Tech, there was a tech float in front of us and then uh, played some tunes while we walked by. And there are actually, I would say, I don't know, thousands of people there. So it was a really good opportunity, I think, for us to get out and kind of represent Texas Tech and bring some spirit to the game tonight. Just because the band's priority in San Diego was its performances doesn't mean members weren't able to enjoy the trip as well. Spare time activities included lunch by the bay, visiting the zoo, and seeing the city of San Diego. The zoo was good. Um, I feel like that's the thing everyone was looking forward to most coming on the trip just because the San Diego Zoo has such a good reputation. So uh, We got there, got to spend like four hours there for free, so it was really good. Um, got to see a lot of different animals. So. The zoo was really cool. I just wish it was uh, lit more, you know. Um, but I really thought the pandas were really cool. Just because, I mean, it's really interesting to see something that's so endangered. So, 
I really thought that was cool. You know, I think just being in the city in general, um, it's so different than Lubbock or in the bowl games before we've gone to Dallas and Houston, which are obviously big cities, but getting out to San Diego, it's 80 degrees in the middle of December. Um, you know, there's a lot of fun things to do when we have free time. And then even when we have built-in events, like we talked about with the Ronald Reagan or with the zoo or the parade, it was all really fun. <laughs> The band continued its performances into the stadium with a pep rally outside at a tailgate and by playing sand tunes during the game. Using its tradition show during halftime allowed fans from outside of Texas a chance to experience some of Tex culture. You never really know. I mean, a lot of times they're, they're just there for the overall experience. So I think every little tidbit helps when their children come and cheer whenever they see the tourists twirl or may hear the band. I think it all kind of helps hype up the game day experience overall. Halftime was closed with the fireworks display that surrounded the stadium. The fireworks were really cool because I was able to still be on the field and look up at them and it was a really cool display and kind of the dancers on the field, they just kind of ran with each other really well because I thought it was really cool how it went with the music and at the end how it just went around the whole um, stadium to end it. I thought that was cool. Reporting from San Diego with the Daily Toreador, I'm Brad Hollison. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>